Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial Series. Last time, we had a bit of an interesting conundrum. If we drew our 3D star field with just our X and Y coordinates, well, we get this. It's not exactly the most striking 3D effect we've ever seen, is it? On the other hand, though, if we draw our 3D star field with our x and y coordinates divided by the z, then instead we get this, which it looks a lot more 3D. This believably looks like a 3D star field. So what happened? Why does dividing by z automatically make everything look 3D? The answer is perspective. Because of the way our eye sees things in perspective, there's a, a sort of trick you can do that makes things appear 3D on a computer monitor. And that's actually very, very important. In fact, if you look at your screen sort of like at a sharp angle, and, well, your screen doesn't actually absolutely fail, but if you can actually see it at a sharp angle, you sort of see the effect really starts breaking down a little bit, and it doesn't look 3D anymore. So this is a trick. And that said, though, it's a very effective trick. And in fact, it's so effective that it is the basis of real-time 3D graphics. And today, I'm going to be showing you how it works. So, picture the scene. Let's say there's a room. And outside, there's some object. And inside the room, there's you. And you're saying, wow, this is perfect. I've always wanted a strangely wide room with a whole bunch of wacky polygonal shapes outside. So you decide you're going to hang out in the room for a while. And from where you're standing right now, that dot is you, you can see this. How do I know you can see this? Well, because the walls are blocking off, say, like this part of that object from your view. So you can't possibly be seeing anything outside this. And it's about this point you say, oh great, Benny's starting to get into all that boring, technical, mathy stuff. It's about time for a nap. So let's say you go to sleep. And while you're asleep, there's a couple of kids come by, and they decide they're going to mess with you a little bit. They're going to try and paint a perfect picture of what this area looks like from your point of view. So when you wake up, you'll see their picture there in the sort of doorway, and you'll think it's still the room. But then you move me, aha, it's not. Now, why are they doing this? I have no idea. Kids are weird these days. But let's say they're doing it for some reason. Now, they have an interesting problem ahead of them. If they just try taking their painting and drawing what's directly behind it, well, they just draw this. That's not exactly what you're seeing, is it? You're seeing everything in this sort of pyramid. So, what they're going to have to do to make things look right is they're actually going to have to sort of move things in towards the center so that, well, everything fits in the image exactly as you're seeing it. And this is a little bit interesting because you're going to have to move it in by some amount, D. I'm just calling it that for, to call it something. And it depends on basically how far the object is from you. So this thing's pretty far away, so we'll need to be moved in a fair bit. Uh, th this thing, the sphere, it's not that far away, so it won't be, need to be moved in as much, and so forth and so on. And here's the trick. All you have to do to figure out how to move things in is figure out, well, how much is this d? Because if you know that d, you take x and y coordinates, divide by d, because if you divide by this amount, it'll move everything in, and what do you know? Everything fits into this tight little square thing, you can just draw the image, and boom, there you are. Perfect image of what the world looks like from your point of view. So, the only question is, how do you find this mysterious D number? How do you figure out what this value is that moves everything in so it fits perfectly, makes the world look exactly like it should from your point of view? And that involves a little bit of math. And really the mathematical trick to figuring this out is realizing that this sort of thing with the D and the Z and the angle, 
It's really just a triangle. I mean, look, it's a triangle, see? <laughs> so, just do a, some very basic trigonometry. There's an angle here, the end. You can measure that. I don't know, maybe those kids had a protractor for some reason. I don't know, maybe one of them's sort of a math nerd. Who knows? <laughs> Figure out the angle. And then what? Well, if you remember the sign, I believe they call it Sokoto, or whatever the abbreviation they use nowadays, basically, take the opposite over the adjacent, that gives you the tangent of the angle. So in this case, that's d over z. And it's excellent. Basic algebra, boom. Tangent of the angle times z equals d. You now know exactly what d is. So now you know. You take x and y, and you divide by the tangent of your viewing angle times z. And there you go. That is the answer. That is the magic equation that will make everything They'll move everything in so it looks like there's really a sense of 3D in the world. It'll make it look like there's that, that image behind it. That, and yeah. Now, if you're looking at this, you might have noticed by now, something looks a little bit familiar about this. Yeah. If I just took away that tangent, this would be x and y divided by z. And... If you notice, what are we doing here? We're taking the x and the y, and we're dividing it by z. So, yeah, there's something fishy going on here. And, believe it or not, what we're trying to do with 3D software rendering is a lot like what those kids are trying to do. What we have is we have a 2D image. In this case, it's our computer monitor. And we're trying to convince the viewer that there is a 3D world behind that image, and we're just using our computer monitor as sort of a window to look into it. And if we want to do that convincingly, we're going to have to use this same sort of trick, so that things are scaled in and we're simulating, well, our field of view. So, with that said, this sort of equation is directly applicable to what we're doing, and that is the reason that it's creating that whole, well, effect. That's why dividing by z is automatically making everything look 3D. But as you may have noticed, this equation doesn't say divide by z. It says divide by tangent of angle times z. So what we're really simulating is actually two things. We're not just simulating this thing as well, this perspective effect. We're also simulating a certain field of view. And to find out what that is, we'll have to do a bit of algebra. So, the you know, tangent of angle is 1, and th if tangent of angle is 1, that, then the equation simplifies to xy divided by z, which is what we have. And doing a bit of algebra, we can figure out that means this angle is the arctangent of 1, which is 45 degrees. And since this is half the angle of this whole pyramid, we actually have to multiply that by 2 to get our field of view, which is 90. So there you go, we're simulating a 90 degree point of view, or field of view. <laughs> and there. And just to drive the point home, I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to give us a way to specify a field of view. So, I'm going to have a final float that I'm going to call tan half f of e. Why am I giving it such a ridiculous name? Well, if you look, this new tangent thing we're introducing, it's tangent of theta, and theta is our field of view over 2. Put 2 and 2 together, that's why I'm calling it that. Take a wild guess at how I'm going to calculate this. Yeah. Well, I am going to cast to a float because Java's tangent function returns a double, but I'm just going to use bath.tan, and I'm actually going to convert to radians because it takes in angles and radians. But other than that, just take the field of view you want, so let's say 70.0, divide by 2.0, there you go. That is tangent of half field of view. And with that, all we have to do is change our whole division by star z thing to actually have this tangent thing in it. So, I'm going to multiply star z times tan half field of view for both of them. And also, make sure you're doing this in parentheses, you know, so you're not actually dividing by star z and then multiplying by tan half field of view. That'll behave a little differently than you expect. So with that, if I build and run, there you go, folks. 
This is what our 3D star field looks like with a 70 degree field of view. Again, it's not the most striking effect for a bunch of flying dots, but you can play around with it. You can make it a wider field of view, like 140 or something. So, yeah, there. And in fact, now it's so wide that our star field doesn't cover the entire window anymore, but yeah, there you go. And again, you can play around with this a little bit. So there you go, everyone. That is how you create a sense of 3D perspective, at least for a bunch of flying dots. But how on earth can you create a sense of 3D perspective for actual 3D shapes and 3D objects? Are we just going to have to sort of decompose them all into a bunch of flying dots? Or is there going to be a more simplex, I, I mean simple, way to do things? Find out next time on the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial Series. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you then.